Praise the Lord has essential appointed this day. That's why the person of the Holy Spirit was once more sent to me. And he sat before me this afternoon and he said, to go tell them, he, say, he sent me, go tell them that the coming of the Lord is in hand. Is in hand. Meaning has drawn quite nigh, very near. That means the day has been appointed for this purpose, for that day, for that event. He says, now at this hour that this announcement has taken place, then we should abstain and refrain from our common chores, our common errands, our common occupations, our common employment, and then set forth a special moment at which now we should draw more closely to attend God's purposes, God's service, God's repentance on this earth, the church, and the nations. He also warns calamity that takes place. I, and I bewailed, I wailed, I mourned for the church that failed to enter. Meaning calamity awaits. Calamity beholds for the church that does not enter. He's saying godliness. Godliness has decayed in the house of the Lord. And so he's saying that now it's time to be restored, to be made whole again, to return to godliness for this event. Tell them to repent. Tell them now to prepare the way. Tell them the coming of the Lord is in hand, meaning everything must now be restored as we await this most blessed and most revered day of the Lord. The moment of truth, the day when we shall know who are those that were really born again. Who are they that were really born again on this earth? Because right now, if you ask them, are you born again? They say, yes, I am born again. Are you spirit-filled? Yes, I am spirit-filled. But that day will be a test. That is the day that will confirm, affirm, and reveal to us on which foundation your salvation has been built, has been launched. Is it on sand or on the rock? So it says, godliness that has been eroded, that has decayed in the house, must now be restored. The love of most that has waxed cold must now be vexed up and fired up in the hearts of men. We must now rendition and bring back the fiery love for Christ. He has said before me this afternoon, and he told me, go tell them, the coming of the Lord is in hand, is in hand. How awesome. How tremendous to say, is in hand. The coming of the Lord is in hand. Because the Bible says, is at hand. But is in hand may as well mean that has now drawn very nigh, must now take place. And the Lord Jehovah continues to do this in his expression of tremendous love unto the church, unto humanity. He's always still beckoning man to return. In other words, tell them to return. And he mentioned many cities. I don't know why he mentioned New York. But the church in those cities are not ready. Globally. And every single place I went to, the broadcast was global through the radio of the Lord, but via the internet. So everybody had the equal opportunity to be able to hear the announcement that said, the coming of the Lord is in hand, is in hand. The person of the Holy Spirit himself today sat before me and said, the coming of the Lord is in hand, and I trembled. I panicked. I did not even think I would reach this hour to announce this. 
for nobody knows the day or the hour. The book of James, chapter 5, verse 8, I begin verse 7. It says, Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer anticipates the precious fruit of the soil as he patiently awaits the fall and the spring rains. Verse 8, he says, You too, be patient and strengthen your hearts because the Lord's coming is near. Very powerful. He's saying, the enduring patience. So in other words, he's saying, even as a farmer awaits a crop, how much more then should we await? Because as a farmer awaits these temporary things here on the earth, the crop, the wheat, the barley, the vegetable, tending them patiently, exhibiting uncommon patience and endurance and trust, trusting that rain will fall and the crop shall come to bear. For this temporary reward, for the temporary recompense, recompenser, how much more than we that are waiting for the husband man, for the husband man, for the Messiah to come, and whose reward in our waiting is eternal glory. How much more should we be patient in that godliness within this very wicked world? This evil world that's full of sexual immorality, everybody thinks immorality left and right from when they are young in schools to everywhere. There is an infection of sexual immorality on the earth. Worldliness and godliness, the systems of heathenism, the systems of, of atheism have consumed the hearts of men from when they are young in school. But he's saying, God tells them to endure just a little longer, for the coming of the Lord is now in hand, is in hand. The coming of the Lord is in hand. Let them endure just a little longer. The coming of the Lord is in hand. In other words, your eternal reward of the crown of glory, the crown of righteousness, the crown of eternal life, the crown of glory awaits. How much more then should we be patient in righteousness, godliness, Holiness, uprightness with the Lord, and in absolute faith, obedience, and humility unto the Lord. How much more then? He says a farmer, a farmer trusts, has faith, that when he plants the crop and weeds it, the rain will come. He awaits patiently, and he has absolute faith, 1,000% faith, there is going to be a crop. And yes, he does have a crop. The Lord your God ensures that that farmer have a crop. The Lord himself, he decrees that for every worker that worketh, their wages must be paid. How much more than the workers of righteousness and to the workers of holiness shall he reward them, give them a pay, their pay, of the crown of glory. And he sat before me today, and he said, go tell them, after the beautiful worship that took place in heaven, and then he said, go tell them, the coming of the Lord is in hand. Is in hand. How amazing. The coming of the Lord is in hand. Why? Why can they endure just a little longer? And it made me know the other church, the church that now has not prepared, has not listened to the announcement, has not cared. 
has done its business as usual. The church, you see, in March 22, that when the announcement came, they said, no, I am busy, I'm doing my other thing. No, actually, we have a trip to Israel, so I'm busy, I'm going to Israel. We have a wedding in our church. We have a project in what? The church that was doing her business as usual, she was so busy, cannot prepare to enter the banquet. While on this other side, he is sending the person of the Holy, God the Holy Spirit himself. And he says, God tells them, the coming of the Lord is in hand. Is in hand. And he's saying, why? Why then can't you wait just a little longer? A little longer. A mother that expects a baby. She waits patiently. She carries the baby patiently with faith that she shall bear a baby and bring the baby to fruition indeed. After nine months, the baby comes out in fruition. How much more than the church should the church have faith on this eternal matter of the day of the Lord? The coming of the Lord is in hand. How much more than should we endure in righteousness? In absolute holiness, in absolute pursuit of righteous standing with God, in zero tolerance to wickedness, apostasy, to sin. He says, the coming of the Lord is in hand. The book of Psalms, Psalms 113, verse 3, he says, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the name of Yahweh, the Lord's name, is to be praised. When that day comes, the coming of the Lord is in hand. When that day comes, all the nations of the earth will understand that surely, yes, only Yahweh is the eternal God. How sad for one to miss that day, to be on the other side of the law of God, to be among the people for whom I wept so bitterly that they had failed to make it. The church that failed to enter. God tells them that the coming of the Lord is in hand. How tremendous. God tells them that the coming of the Lord is in hand. Is in hand. How mighty. What a beloved time when the Lord himself has to make the announcement that the coming of the Lord is in hand. And he rewards. He rewards the patient he rewards those that trust in him. He has never let them down. Those that trust in the Lord, he has never let down. The book of Psalms 18 verse 30 says, As for God, his way is blameless. The word of the Lord is tested. It is perfect. It is faultless. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. And he says, God tells them, the coming of the Lord is in hand. So he is a shield unto those that trust in him. That when that day comes, they don't be put to shame, but enter the safety of eternity in heaven. The coming of the Lord is in hand, he says. How tremendous. How beautiful. How awesome that the Lord himself can come and say, God tells them, after the beautiful worship on the left hand side in heaven, and God tells them that the coming of the Lord is in hand. Psalms 31, 23. All love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewarded the proud doers. That will be the day of reckoning. 
when the Lord shall reward, because it says, for the Lord rewarded the faithful. Have you been faithful to the Lord? Have you been faithful? Because he says, God tell them that the coming of the Lord is in hand. I still see him. I still see him seated there. That the coming of the Lord is in hand, meaning this is the hour to trust in the Lord. May those who have ears prepare the way for the glorious coming of the Messiah. I have seen the Messiah come for a glorious church. And like I said, I have wept in the dream. I have wept when I saw the church that failed to enter. So let us be trustworthy. Let us be honest people. Let us depend on our refuge, on the Lord. This is the hour at which to lay down our common occupation, our common employment, our common shores, our common duty, and now give duty. Let us respond to the call of duty to do the service unto God, to pursue holiness and righteousness, to be born again in Christ Jesus, to win souls unto the Lord. And I've said this again and again, that when the Messiah comes, he will judge the nation. Those that enter, he will determine by the following, whether they obeyed his command. Number one, whether they obeyed his command. Number two, whether that obedience in his command transformed. In other words, how much their lives themselves transformed into that obedience. As they obeyed, their lives themselves transformed and conformed to that obedience. If the Messiah says, be holy, how much you obeyed that? And how much your lifestyle conformed to that obedience? Obedience unto the Lord. The Messiah is coming. I have seen the coming of the Lord. And thus says the Lord, the coming of the Lord is in hand. Shalom.